hello guys so as you can see I've taken a little bit of a 10 when it comes to my YouTube videos so what I've done is that I'm gonna do a presentation before my videos then I'm gonna do a little bit of what I can show you guys on ePlan so for example right here I'm gonna speak about the difference between NPN and PNP sensors so I'm gonna guide you guys through what's the difference and what points to note when you are looking at PNP and NPN sensors so that's the different 10 that I've taken instead of just focusing on ePlan and showing you guys how to do schematics or showing you guys the tips and tricks in ePlan I can actually maybe just uh, note you guys the difference in terms of sensors note you guys in terms of motors note you guys in terms of the difference between active and passive sensors and free potential devices and all that so maybe it will be a a good way of actually approaching the whole journey into the YouTube videos and actually just demonstrating how everything is integrated in the real world. So just to start off things uh, with PNP and NPN sensors. So basically what are NPN and PNP sensors? These are sensors which are commonly used in the industrial automation industry. These sensors are commonly used for detecting objects and positioning. So we use them a lot when it comes to positioning and detecting the position in terms of like, for example, where the left is, maybe the left is upstairs, we can detect that position or maybe the left is downstairs, we can detect that position. We can also detect as a car is coming into a new station so just to slow it down to ramp the motor a little bit down and then fully put it to a stop so those are the things that we can detect and uh, the main difference between the NPN and the PNP sensors is basically how the transistor is switched so basically that's the polarities of the transistor that's the main difference between the PNP and the NPN sensors and with that transistor it basically indicates how you would connect it into your circuit so basically that's how you would determine how it needs to be connected into the circuit that you're designing so with NPN sensors as you can see right here in my presentation, I have a ship. This is the Titanic as it's sinking. So when I think of an NPN sensor, I actually think of the Titanic sinking. And as it sinks, it actually sinks towards the ground. So that's how I look at an NPN sensor. It sinks towards the ground. So basically, an NPN sensor is called also a sinking sensor. And it switches the ground zero volt to the output. When a sensor is active, it connects the output to the ground, completing the circuit. So with the NPN sensor, it's used when the load is connected to a positive voltage. So as I often tell the guys is that with your NPN sensor is that the load is always connected to the 24 volts. As you can see right here, the load is always connected to the 24 volts. It's just waiting for the zero volt to happen. So basically what happens is that with the zero volt, it will come to the sensor. And when it switches on, this is a three wire sensor. As you can see, three wires, one, two, three. When it switches on the zero, the zero will actually travel in this area which is the black and then it will give that load the zero volt so when it gives that load the zero volt the circuit is then officially complete with the 24 and the zero so when I speak about the load it simply means the device which the sensor gives power to so the sensor gives power to the load therefore the load can be any device that accepts 24 volts so if it accepts 24 volts that can be a load sometimes you get sensors that can switch 230 volts so if it accepts 230 volts it's also uh, called a load these devices can often be a relay for example the load can be a relay can be a contactor can be a valve you can also switch on other devices like sirens or horns maybe there's a fault because the sensor has detected an unauthorized uh, human inside a cell or something like that or inside a spray booth so it can actually signal that to the horn so it switches the load which is the horn or it switches a siren and then it can actually alert the authorized people to actually come and investigate what's happening it can also switch on a plc input so that's one of the things that it can switch on as well so yeah it can switch on an alarm or anything like that so that's what the npn sensor and the other one which is the pnp sensor often called the sourcing sensor basically supplies positive voltage to the output so it supplies 24 volts or 230 volts to the output when the sensor is active it connects the output to the positive voltage so therefore it completes the circuit the pnp sensor is commonly used when the load is connected to the ground so basically 
what I often say as well with this one is that it's always connected to the ground. So basically the load is always connected to the ground and is just patiently waiting for 24 volts. So as you can see right here as well, this is the load right here and you can see it's actually always connected to the ground. It's just patiently waiting for a 24 volts. So the 24 volts maybe come from this area right here. This is a three wire sensor as well. It can be 24 volts or 230 depending on the sensor that you're using. So basically it will come in here. The 230 or 24 volts and then it switches on via what the sensor detects and then it will actually pass it down with the black wire and actually switch on your load so your load is patiently waiting for 24 volts or is patiently waiting for 230 volts so that can be also your load can be a siren as well can be a plc input and so forth and then just to conclude this before i show you guys how you can wire it up in eplan Basically, just to conclude this presentation is that uh, with NPN sensors, which is the sinking sensors, they connect the output to the ground when they active uh, and they used when the load is connected to the positive. So just like I said, uh, it's always connected to the positive. And then with the PNP sensor basically connects the output to the positive when active. So it's always connected to the ground, just patiently waiting for 24 volts. So applications basically with the NPN sensor, they are mostly and commonly used in Asia when the PLC accepts syncing inputs. And then with the PNP, it's mostly commonly used in South Africa and also in Europe as well. We use it a lot in Europe and South Africa. And this is used when the PLC accepts sourcing input. And just to make sure that one thing before you connect the sensor to the PLC is that you have to ensure that the sensor type and the PLC input type, they actually match each other. So the PLC or whatever device that you're connecting to, whatever load that you're connecting to, they actually match with the sensor so that you don't connect the 24 volts to the zero or the zero to the 24 volts. And also one thing to note is that some sensors have short circuit, reverse polarity or overload protection. Therefore, always choose the best sensor for the job. The NPN switching method is typically faster than the PNP switching method because the electrons tend to move faster than the holes used in the PNP. So basically the holes they move a little bit slower therefore the NPN is suitable in devices which require high speed but when I speak about high speed I'm not talking about a high speed line like a coke at coca-cola factory or something like that I'm speaking more about high speed like digital electronics high frequency devices or something like that so those are high speed that I'm referring to I'm not referring to devices like a coca-cola system or something like that where they manufacture coca-cola cool drinks at a high speed or something like that that's not the high speed that I'm referring to when I say the NPN switching method is actually much faster but I'm actually referring it to maybe like inside a device like a cell phone maybe a laptop or something like that so it's mostly preferred to use a NPN because it's much faster in terms of switching so before I jump into ePlan I just want to show you the sensors that I've selected and I've actually used in my ePlan design so basically in my ePlan design I've actually used this one from IFM and that's the IFS248 sensor and you can see right here it's a PNP sensor. So as you can see at the bottom of the data sheet you can see also the connection right here which is the similar one that I have in my presentation. So you can see right here as well it always has the zero volt and it's patiently waiting for the 24 volts. So the 24 volts, this when the sensor switches on, it will actually supply it with the 24 volt. So basically that's that. And then if you look at this one right here, this is the IW5064 and that's the NPN sensor normally closed. And when it switches on, as you can see here right here, when it switches on, it will actually give zero volt to the load. So basically it always has 24 volts. And when it switches on, it switches on the zero volt and it gives that zero volt to the load. So that's what's happening with this one. And right here, I've actually also selected here this digital input card. So if you look at it, it's a Siemens one. And this is the part number for the digital input card. And as you can see, it actually sources the voltage 
so you can look at it right here on page 16 this is how you could connect it with the one wire or with the two wire you can actually connect it like this so you actually give it uh, 24 volts so you would receive 24 volts from this digital input card and when your sensor switch is on it closes that circuit and then that circuit is complete and it then gives 24 volts to the digital input right here and if you look at this one right here it's also a Siemens one I'll show you just the part number for it right here it's also a Siemens one but with this one it's a sinking so if you look at it right here if you look at the schematic right here the suggestion from Siemens so right here is for the one wire and right here is for two wires and if you can look at it right here it's for three wires so basically with the three wires similar to what we have right here if you look at it with the three wire so you'll see that with the three wire we always have 24 volts and we switch the zero volts so that's what Siemens also says here we always have 24 volt we switch on the zero volt which is the blue one so you will receive the blue one it will travel right here and when it switches on this is basically your sensor right here and when your sensor switches on it supplies zero volt to the digital input card so this is the different one which we're using this is the sourcing and you can see right here with the three wire you can see that you supply it with the 24 volt and when it switches on it switches the 24 volt and the 24 volt travels to the digital input it always connects to the zero so it's always at zero volts it's just patiently waiting for the 24 volt so that's what happens with that one and that's the difference between the two of them so if I go to ePlan so in ePlan what I've done is that I've created a basic schematic right here so with this basic schematic you can see right here what I did was I just called it thus for YouTube and then my location designation you can see right here is just NPN PNP and therefore I just receive power so I receive power from an enclosure that's called three-phase motor enclosure and then I switch on through my circuit breaker and I go through my power supply and then on the next page right here what you see is that we have the circuit breaker so this is the electronic selectivity module from Siemens so with this one we just switch on the ET200 which is our ET200 remote IO and then we have two digital input cards so these two digital input cards they basically these ones right here if I go here this is the first one and then this is the second one as you can see right here we have the first one and the second one so basically we switch it on we give this one 24 volts this is 24 volts without being uh, monitored or without having any protection only thing is that it's coming from the power supply and then through this we give it protection you can see right here there is protection there and we have some diodes to just protect it from reverse polarity or just current that flows back into the system so we just protect it from that so it won't have any current flowing this direction but we only have current flowing towards this which is the remote IO that's the ET200 and we have current flowing towards this which is the first input card the second input card and then we have 24 volts just for general so that's protected through 2 amp 1.5 1.5 2 amp this is because this is just an example I didn't really look into the data sheet that I need to really protect it with 2 amps or with just 1.5 this enclosure doesn't exist so it's just an example so this is how I do it on this section and then right here on page 200 what happens is that I have four sensors so I have these four sensors two of them they actually the PNP and then these two are the NPN so as you can see I just named it like this which is the left up left bottom basically the uh, left is at the bottom ground floor and then this one the left is at the first floor and as the left is approaching this first floor we need to slow it down as the left is going towards the ground floor we just need to slow it down so we're using those two sensors for that and we're using these two for that so as you can see here I have my 24 volts and you can see my 24 volts is, has a connection there to this terminal it has a connection to this terminal and right here on this section it has a connection to this load that's the relay and it also has a connection to this relay right here and then with the zero volt you can see with this section the zero volt has a connection to x2 and it has a connection to the relay it has a connection to x2 there and the relay and right here with this one the zero volt has a connection to 
this terminal right here and with this one it has a connection to this terminal right here so that's the difference between the two and as you can see this is a three wire basically all of them are three wire sensors so right here what happens is that with this one because it's a pnp so it switches on in this manner so basically the current travels from there and it goes like that so basically this load right here it always connects to the zero volt so it's always connected to the zero volt and it's just patiently waiting for the 24 volts so we need to give it 24 volts this coil right here we need to supply it with 24 volts and the same happens with this one but if you look at this one right here what needs to happen is that we need to give it a zero volt so basically right here it will travel like this so basically we need to give it a zero volt this coil it's always connected to 24 volts so it just needs to complete the circuit by receiving a zero volt so it will receive a zero volt in that manner right there so that's how you can actually connect it and then what happens is that you need to send that signal to the plc so i've made references right here to send the signal to the plc so basically these are the two which has the pnp and these are the two which is the npn so you can see right here even we actually having a zero volt that's coming in like that and that zero volt switches through that uh, change over contact and then it goes to the plc so we actually feeding the plc zero volt just like they explained right here we need to feed the plc the zero volt so when that uh, contactor change over contactor switches on it actually feeds the plc the zero volt so that's the connection right there so as you can see that's the connection that we have right there and then with this section right here it's the 24 volts so we're feeding the plc the digital input card we're actually feeding it 24 volts so this is the connection right here in red then it changes to the black wire so we're feeding it 24 volts like that so you can see it actually right here we're feeding 24 volts like that to the input card we're feeding zero volts like that to the input card so that's the path function text and that's how you can actually connect it so i've actually made the mounting panel so i've made the mounting plate in 3d so this is how it actually looks like with the wiring and all that so these are the circuit breakers this is the incoming this is for to supply the other enclosure and then this one right here it's just to supply the power supply and then the power supply feeds the selectivity module and then the selectivity module just feeds the different items which require 24 volt which is the remote io the first digital input card which is the pnp and then the second digital input card which is the npn we just feed it like that and then after that we do the switching and all that's necessary via the relay and what the sensor sees in the field and therefore all the switching is done like that so you can actually do something similar to that with the pnp and with the npn sensors so that's what you can do and i hope you guys had some information that you guys can receive and take out from this video i sure hope to see you guys soon